Welcome, my name is Jason Namora. I'm sorry I wasn't there to discuss this research project with you at the Society for Academic Emergency Medicine 2014 poster session. My project is entitled Customized Swallow Screening Tool to Exclude Aspiration Pneumonia Risk in Acute Stroke Patients. There are many of us that work together and collaborate on this project, as you can see, from multiple departments and institutions. We know that stroke can lead to dysphagia risk and that dysphagia risk can lead to uh, aspiration pneumonia. And that aspiration pneumonia carries some morbidity and mortality risk with it and can complicate your course after an acute stroke. The problem is that there are swallow screens that can evaluate for dysphagia risk. And swallow screens meaning tools that can be performed at the bedside by non-speech pathologists, meaning usually other healthcare providers such as the bedside nurse. However, there have been variable screens and efficacy of these screens. And currently, the American Stroke Association says that using one of the tools that has been studied and used before is probably the best way to go, or to validate your own tool. And what our project here was intended to do was describe the performance of a customized swallow screening tool that our institution uses to exclude aspiration risk. And our swallow tool has two parts to it. The first is a questionnaire where the clinical provider is asked a series of questions to describe the patient's ability to manage their secretions, disc, uh, verbalize, and um, perform certain oral maneuvers such as being able to lick their lips and swallow without any difficulty and cough. If they can pass that portion, they move on to the water sip test where they're drinking successively increasing sizes of water and being evaluated for aspiration. Now, this is different than what the speech pathologist would be doing. This is intended as a tool to be performed by any medical provider at the bedside. This tool was developed by a combination of several tools that was evaluated by a speech pathologist and went through a series of a modified Delphi evaluation and modification until we came up with a final tool that we chose to implement at the bedside several years ago in our institution. What we did is we took all the discharges for a particular year that had the compatible codes for an acute stroke, which left us with 1,627 patients. Out of that, 1,167 patients received the swallow screen. Now, I would just mention here that those patients that did not receive the swallow screen are including those that were intubated for prolonged periods, patients that were felt inappropriate for the swallow screen and straight to a pathologist's consult for evaluation of swallowing ability and dysphagia risk, and those that may have been devastated or even had a mortality during their stay and therefore never reached the point of receiving a swallow screen for oral intake. Out of those who received the swallow screen, 908 were negative. Out of those, 896 did not have an aspiration pneumonia and 12 did. And the way we define aspiration pneumonia were those charts that were coded for aspiration pneumonia during that visit. And the reason we use this methodology is that that is a outcome and a complication that we track as part of our stroke program. And you can see there out of the 259 screen positives, 236 were pneumonia negative and 23 were pneumonia positive when we reviewed their charts. Which leads us to the swallow screen being negative and having a negative aspiration risk or aspiration pneumonia sensitivity of 65.7 with the 95% confidence confidence interval shown there, a specificity of 79.2% with the confidence interval shown there, which leads us to a negative predictive value of 98.7% with a nice tight 95% confidence interval, so a very high negative predictive value. An additional portion of the study as a sub-study and a subgroup analysis is that there were 352 patients who had successive swallow screens performed by ED and stroke unit nurses in a rapid succession during that visit. Out of those 352, we calculated the inter-rater reliability for a moderate agreement of 45.7, meaning that the emergency department nurse had a moderate agreement with the specialized stroke-specific nurse at the bedside in performing a swallow screen eval tool for stroke patients. Now, I will say that if you were to look at this number and exclude the ones where the ED nurses said the patient had a swallow risk positive tool, meaning that they were at risk for dysphagia and could not have oral intake, and the stroke unit nurse felt that they were negative, this agreement becomes much better. And the reason that we could look at it that way is if the ED nurse feels that the patient can take oral intake and doesn't get oral intake, that does not put them at an increased risk for aspiration from oral intake because we are keeping them uh, NPO pretty much. So that category I'm okay with if the 
emergency department is a little more stringent or uh, overcalls the aspiration risk and swallow difficulty. So once again, when we go back, this study shows that this customized swallow screen tool, which is actually a combination of a discussion and evaluation tool and a swallow test, shows that there's a negative predictive value of 98.7, which means that a negative swallow screen puts the acute stroke patient at a low risk for aspiration pneumonia. So this actually shows that this tool has some purpose and helps us screen out patients, or at least shows us that these patients are at a low risk for aspiration pneumonia.